I just found five bikes for 375 bucks. Five bikes, one of them's got a bomber fork and Fox suspension. It's almost too good to be true. I have to find out by what nefarious means they acquired these five bikes. It looks like an entire family just disappeared. If there's anything fishy about it, I don't want to be moving weird merchandise. Yeah, these are, these definitely need some work. Would you take 325 for all of them? Yep. Yeah, let's do it. It seemed a little less nefarious when I pulled up and got the whole story. Mom trying to clean up house. They don't ride the bikes anymore. They're all projects. It's not gonna be easy. These bikes are highly, highly neglected. Looking back on that day, it wasn't as good of a deal as I thought at the time. The only thing we really got out of that deal that was worth anything was this full suspension bike. And it's been neglected. So what's worse, abuse or neglect? Mountain bikes, I think, like to be used. This one's been sitting around for a really long time. It's lived the pretty hard life outside. Perfectly good working bottom bracket. Chris King headset, no egregious parts whatsoever. They're just in really bad condition. And come to think of it, I can't even really figure out what type of bike it is. So hopefully this bike isn't a money pit. Let's break it down and see what we find. So I've really dug into this bike. Everything's a part and they're really dirty. So I have years of neglect to wash off of these parts, but a lot of them are pretty good. And most of the stuff that's rusty and needs replacement is really cheap, just hardware. So it's a new day. I'm off to the hardware store to find replacements for these bolts and a better solution for this hodgepodge of washers. Whoever had the bike last used all these washers to try and center the shock. I think nylon washers would probably be more appropriate. As for the things we couldn't find at the hardware store, I have some rust removers, so we'll clean up the old stuff as best we can. So we'll do all the cleaning at once, the prepping, repairing individual parts, and of course, the painting. And because we've been doing more painting, I got something. This thing, it's like a tent. It's got all sorts of features that make it good for painting. I would have just bought a camping tent, but this costs less. Yeah, I don't have to get paint all over my garage anymore. This is pretty sweet. considered going with something fun, but settled on graphite. Painting it lime green or mustard yellow might limit our buyers, and so this will keep things on the up and up. And while the first coat of paint hardens, I can start getting to work on some of the other components that are in need of help. I was gonna sandblast this stuff, but it's coming right off with brake cleaner, which isn't a good sign. Serious question, are we spending too much time to restore two mechanical brake calipers? Absolutely. But if you're broke and you want a mountain bike that rides and looks like new, you can spend a rainy weekend doing this and put sweat equity into a really inexpensive bike that just needs some work. Brake lever's riveted in, so I'm masking it. I'm just gonna touch it up, but if these are the original brakes, that is the date of manufacture, which puts it at 06. Can help us narrow down the bike, maybe. While the paint is curing, we have something that I hope does not end up being a waste of time, and that is this coil fork.
It says right here contains high pressure nitrogen. Do not dick with. We also found another piece to the puzzle. This damper is dated 2008, which tells us a little bit more about this bike's story. So it looks like we can save this fork. The only things that look bad are a few O-rings and those we can just replace. For now, gotta clean out the lowers. This time I've got actual Marzocchi stickers. We're not gonna make a mutant out of this one. And all we have left to address are these stanchions. The only thing that's gonna bring these back to life is abrasion. So we'll start with some pretty rough sandpaper and work our way down till they're nice and smooth. And with that, we can restore this fork to its former glory by reassembling it. This particular model does not take oil, just grease. And because it is a coil fork, it should last another 400 years with semi-regular maintenance. All right, so I have spoken to the Neckbeard Council and the consensus is, since this is an old coil shock, if the rebound works, let it ride. Don't take it apart. We have the rebound all the way open. Okay, let's close it up. Oh yeah. Rebound works. I am going to accept the advice from the Neckbeard Council, uh, AKA Pat. Let's put it back on the bike. Actually, let's get this bike together. Time to get all the parts figured out. Now, first of all, this is a big bike and it's got these little bitty handlebars. This is gonna be like a big person riding this bike and by today's standard, they're not very long. So, I've got a way bigger set of bars. They've just been sitting around for ages. I also have a stem, it was actually on the knee scooter. I'm gonna put a cheaper stem back on that knee scooter. We're also gonna throw a larger cassette on this bike to make it climb better and throw the old one back in the parts bin. So now we'll press in the headset and start making this look like a bicycle. So another way we can zero in on what type of bike this is, is the derailleur hanger. This is a derailleur hanger number 49 on wheels manufacturing. If you search Google, it's gonna come up. And it says that if it's Diamondback, GT, Jamis, Fuji, and a couple of other brands, if you think you found the bike that it fits, it's gotta have this derailleur hanger or it's not that bike. So now we're gonna set up the cockpit and because both the shifting and brakes are cable actuated on this bike, it's a great opportunity to tell you that these cables are not one and the same. This is cable, this is housing. Brakes usually have a fatter housing and a fatter cable. The ends are gonna be different. Just something to keep in mind if you're ordering up supplies, you'll be really bummed out if you have the wrong end or the wrong width and nothing fits. There's internal cable routing from here to here. In newer bikes, there's like a little plastic tube inside it that guides the cable. <laughs> it coming out this hole is like a fantasy, but I got a tool for that. These two wires are magnetic, so when you fish them through the frame, they find each other. Then you can tape it to your housing and pull it through. <laughs> right out, there we go. Oh man, this is a dramatically different bike than we started with. 
Oh, man. Damn. I think it's time to stare at it. So I gave the bike a little test to make sure everything works well. I burned in the brakes, but it's really too big for me. It's more Kevin size. And so he's gonna give it a trail shakedown. All right, so I got it listed. I left a lot of details. I'll read you the basic gist. For sale is a full suspension mountain bike size large. This would work for anyone 5'10 and up. The bike has been expertly restored from the ground up with brand new cables, brake pads, cassette, front chain ring, and chain. Even the fork has been serviced and given a new set of decals. You can buy this bike and head straight to the trails with it. Now, the reason that I listed it so cheap is we do have a few things working against us. First of all, I have no idea what brand it is, and so that's gonna make some people skeptical. It's the beginning of February. We've had snow on the ground for the last three weeks, and I need to sell this quick because I gotta put this video out next week. Somebody out there is gonna get a really screaming deal. I have to price the bike a little lower because I don't know what it is. So we didn't end up selling the bike in this episode, but it's the beginning of February and there's been snow on the ground for a month, so I'm not surprised. And so you'll find out what it's sold for in the next episode. For now, on to the breakdown. We threw a set of wider used handlebars on there for 20 bucks. Stem was used, 25 bucks. Paint ended up costing 20. Nuts, bolts, and replacement hardware will call five bucks. Cables and housing were also five bucks. The grips came off another bike, four dollars. A used 26 inch tire, we'll call it 10 bucks. The single speed chain ring was $13. Chain was $14. The Marzocchi decals were 10 bucks off Etsy. Larger nine speed cassette was 27 bucks. Bolt on skewers, $12. Brake pads were only five bucks because I bought them in bulk. And the replacement jockey wheel was $6. The handlebar, stem, and cassette I put back into the parts bin and all together I can only give it a value of $15. The bike was $150 and so that is a $311 cost. Anything we get above that is profit. Now surely the massive amount of time spent restoring this bike should be factored in, but that's not really what this is about. We got a bike that looked like it belonged in the trash and now it is a very presentable, nice riding bike. Anyway, I really enjoyed restoring this bike. We still don't know what type of bike it is. If you wanna try and figure it out for yourselves, it's a derailleur hanger number 49. Whatever bike you think it is, it has to fit that derailleur hanger. And find out next time what the bike actually sold for. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time. It's the following morning. Kevin's going to drop the bike off with its new owner right now. Sold it for $5.25. That gives us a profit of $214. Not so bad. We took something that was just sitting around, neglected, and put it back on the trails.